You're tuned in to the Behind the Ears podcast with Uncle Danny and Mr. Chris, because everybody does Disney differently. The Behind the Ears podcast crew would like to thank the following sponsors for their generous support. Hey everybody, it's Mr. Chris, and I gotta tell you about Expedition Roasters. Listen, I'm a, I'm a pretty big coffee drinker, just like a lot of you are, but these people have got coffee right. Their coffees are made from selectively sourced premium and specialty grade Arabica beans. They provide the absolute best flavor and aroma, and select roasts even come directly from a single estate farm for a truly perfect cup that is never bitter. They've got awesome Disney-inspired flavors, such as Roundhouse Roast, Route 66, Skipper's Brew, Dark Side Roast, Redhead Rum, and one of my favorites, Bob Slater's Brew. Listen, if you want to have the taste of Disney in every cup, give them a try today. ExpeditionRoasters.com and Behind the Ears podcast listeners gets an extra 20% off your first order by using the coupon code EARS20. That's right, E-A-R-S-2-0. And you can find them over at ExpeditionRoasters.com. Brew your happy place. If you have a little one and you're going to Walt Disney World, you're going to need a stroller. I'll tell you what, kingdomstrollers.com is the place where you want to look into. I'll tell you, you know, I've destroyed my fair share of strollers while while at Walt Disney World, and those things are not cheap. But getting something from kingdomstrollers.com, they'll be able to help you pick out the perfect stroller for you. And the nice part is, is that because they're a Disney preferred provider, They'll be able to drop it off and pick it up right from your Disney Resort at no extra charge. So if you don't want to necessarily destroy your stroller in the process and you want to have a great Disney vacation with your little one, contact KingdomStrollers.com and they'll set you right up. That's KingdomStrollers.com. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. and Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Behind the Ears Podcast, I am Uncle Danny, the man with the plan. His name is not Stan. It is Chris. Sir, how are you? My name is not Stan. You are absolutely correct. I'm doing well. I am cheery and chubby. There you go. That's a good combo. I like that. Yes. So uh, I'm assuming it's been hot out by you like it has out by me. How's that been affecting you? Oh, dude. I mean, it's been crazy. Um, some people say, oh, well, it's, you know, at least then you don't have to, like, go to Florida, feel like you're in Florida. I'm like, oh, oh, oh that's really funny. You know, it's <laughs> like, it, it's really, it, it, it was really ridiculous over the past few days. And now it's just, it's getting cooler, but it's now just muggy. And what's worse is, you know, it doesn't matter where you go. It's just, it's just hot. And you know what? I like being outside. I like doing things outside, but when you like walk outside and you just turn into, you know, a big gigantic squishy sponge because you're, you know, you're just sweating. That's not fun. If I was in Florida, I'd accept this. If I was at Disney, not a problem, but you know, I I just, you know, one of those things. Take a guess how hot it was in the back of my truck today. Oh, I bet you if you're, I bet you your truck easily 115 degrees. Easily. You were close. Yeah. 119 today. Ooh, I was going to hit 120, but I thought, ah, I give it a little bit yeah. of the doubt. Yeah. You know, but oh, you know, I, I have to admit, um, I felt really bad for the delivery drivers, both UPS and FedEx and, and, and our local postal service because they were coming through and, you can just tell that they were just like, <sighs> just miserable. Cause it, cause those little white, those little white, like, you know, post office delivery truck ish type of things. Mm-hmm. They don't have air conditioning. Nope. Just nothing. And they have a fan. They have a fan. <laughs> yeah. That let's just blow hot air. It's like, we might as well just get into like a hair dryer. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. I don't think so. And it's just, it's just really ridiculous. And, um, Oh, oh, but I have, I have, I have, I have a funny story to tell you, and this is about heat and I'm only telling you this story because I know that she doesn't listen to the show. My mother-in-law calls yesterday. I think there's something wrong with my air conditioner. Oh, okay. I'll come over and take a look at it. How, how how hot is it in your house right now? Oh, it's 71 degrees. What? 71 degrees. Oh yeah. I have it set for 68. 
Okay. Be concerned that the it's not keeping cool. Well, what happened? I didn't realize that she was gone for two days and had it set for seventy two degrees, and she was upset that it only dropped at one degree in like an hour of running her air conditioning after she got home. I looked and like the, everything's working. You need to put this thing warmer because it's freezing in your house. You can you can hang meat freezing. in your house. Oh, 65 is the way to go. Oh, oh, no, this was like, bleh. I thought, Speaking like, of that, yeah. my parents' air conditioner went. Oh, I'm surprised. Wait, I take it you got it fixed because you don't look like a sweaty mess right now. It's fixed. It's a temporary fix. What, duct tape? Wire? Uh, they just f- tuned it up a little bit, basically. So what that means is they have to get a whole new air conditioning unit. The air conditioning unit is also linked to the furnace. Yeah. So you have to now get a brand new furnace as well, because they no longer make that furnace. Nice. Hey, they got eighteen years out of it though. Oh well, that's that's quite a bit. Well, all I know is that when you go on vacation, that air, that you know, it's like the, the you know, TV gets turned on all night long. The air conditioning runs all night long. You know, Mallory yeah. keeps the hers at fifty. Wow. That is a meat locker. Wow! <laughs> wow! Ooh, burr. Okay, well. Before we start the show, I do want to give a, an apology. Yes, I saw Enrique said it in the beginning of the show. Oh, that's the wrong comment. There it is. Yes, the four people that I owe gifts to, Enrique and Chris, and two others, obviously. Um, no, your gifts have not gotten out yet. I do apologize. They are packaged. They just have not left Los Casa to head to Los Post Office. I, I don't. I don't know the Spanish terminology Dude, for don't, post office. Don't don't try. Just, <laughs> don't try. I just put put los in front of everything. I promise you, they will get out. I'm really sorry. Very busy. And, and they will get out. And at the same time, someone gave me the wrong address to send it to. Their gift. Oh no! So I actually have to mail it out. I will be doing that this afternoon, or not this afternoon. This probably towards this weekend. People I, do forget that this podcast is not our main job. It's very tough to balance life, real job, this other job. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's, it's it, it, it takes a lot of time, and uh, um, I, I say this with love and humor. I can only get my wife to do so much for me. <laughs> Enrique, don't don't stop keeping your hopes up. Keep believing. Keep dreaming. They're coming. Keep watching that for him. Don't stop believing. <laughs> okay, I'll stop right there before we, you know. So uh, first on the list tonight, we have Pixar has new leadership? Yeah, question mark? Yeah, this is really, this is this has kind of been hitting the news uh, quite a bit. And it's not, here's the thing. It's not news that I think a lot of people understand what's going on. <clears throat> But I think a lot of people knew that this was going to be coming. And, and I'm not going to get into a big commentary of what brought us into this. I just uh, – I'm, I'm saying that with respect. Obviously, a, a lot of junk happened. And, um, you know, John Lasseter is exiting his position. Uh, and, and people don't realize – not everybody has a realization that he was the chief creative, off, chief creative officer for both Walt, Walt Disney Animation Studios as well as Pixar. So both organizations that we enjoy a lot of our current animation from. So basically it's going to be split into two different people. Jennifer Lee is now going to take on the position of the CCO over at uh, Walt Disney Animation Studios, while Pete Doctor is going to be the CCO over at Pixar. Now, Hmm. I think this is actually really pretty cool. Now, for those people who are trying to figure out where have you heard those names before, um, Pete Doctor worked on Monsters Incorporated, Up, and in, in most recently Inside Out. Uh, he was one of the founding uh, animators and storytellers at Pixar. So the thing is, is that he's got a lot of a lot of history with the company and so on. Um, it's also my understanding, and this is all according to Collider.com. He's currently writing Toy Story Four. So, which um, that's actually pretty cool. And so he's been there for like 28 years. So it's not like he's he's a newbie. I mean, he's been around for a while and it's really, really cool. And as for Jennifer Lee, uh, her first writing credit was on Wreck-It Ralph. She co-wrote Zootopia. Um, she scripted A Wrinkle in Time. And she's currently writing and directing, directing Frozen 2. Um, so the thing is, is that... 
you know, both of them taking on this new role may change the way that they interact with some things here. But the fact of the matter is, is that they're, we finally are hearing about the new leadership now. Um, I'm actually pretty, pretty happy to hear that they're finally making, making these announcements. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those cases where I know there's, there's some, there's some obviously some, do I want to call it political, you know, po- office politics type of thing of what's going on. It's just, just obviously some, not some good things were going on and um, this is going to be a change. I think we were going to look forward to what's, what's ahead. And I'm at, they both have in store for the two organizations. I know, and I've said this before and I'll say it again. Walt Disney Animation Studios has been really up in their game for quite some time now, and I don't think that they would make either one of these changes um, for Pixar or um, WDAS if it wasn't going to enhance the quality of the brand itself. So I really actually think that it's going to be um, a very positive change going forward. And so that's my somewhat editorial. I think it's going to be cool. They're obviously working on some good you know, sequels and continuing series. Um, dude, I, I think at least now we know, now we know what's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, listen, you nailed it on the head. There's really not much to get into because once you start diving into this, you're just going to get into the mud of everything that went the good, the bad, the ugly with it. Yeah. So and we're not at like that. that. We're, uh, just not, we're just not into that. Sorry. We're in good hands. Uh, you know, let's hope we're in good hands. Uh, you know, on paper, it looks to be good. Listen, He's a legend in his work. Um, that's it's big shoes to fill. It is. It is. It is it's actually really one of those things where he's obviously he's going to be, um, you know, probably sought out by some other company. I'm betting. But in know, time, in I'm time. sure in time. in time. All I say is I knock on wood. I hope he doesn't go to Universal. You know, I, I think I, Universal won't touch him just because of the so. high profile of everything going on with him and how big Universal is. But, I, you know, it's interesting you say that because I think you and I kind of touched on that before. If if not on the air, I know you and I probably talked about it just between the two of us. It's a distinct possibility. I mean, over time, things might happen. We've seen we've seen weirder things in Hollywood happen over time. Um, you know, Enrique actually just made a comment. He's kind of thinking that, uh, it might be DreamWorks, which, you know, is equally as interesting of a concept. Um, yeah. you know, <clears throat> there's some other really good, uh, animation studios out there that quite honestly, they, they're good, but they can really use the expertise of someone like Lasseter. But, you know, again, the stuff that happened is is going to be one of those things that's going to follow him around for quite some time, and well, we're going to have to see what happens with that. So, so moving on to part two, we yeah. have a segment called "Don't Get Scammed." <laughs> what are you doing? Know your stuff. I don't know what Chris has for this one. So, Chris, what are we not getting scammed on today? Well, okay. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and let me mention a couple of things. There have been some there have been some things going around on Facebook a lot lately. And I've made some PSAs in regards to this on my page personally, and maybe even over at the WDW community, you know, there's, there's two types of things that are going on these days. A lot more all targeting those of us that love Disney vacations and so on and so forth. And the idea that we can possibly win something for free. Um, the problem of it is, is that anytime that you see something on Facebook that says like and share in order to win, and it's like from a major airline, like I saw one for Southwest, uh, you see one for Disney Cruise Line, you see one for Disney, and the, the problem of it is, is that these are not coming from these companies. These are fake, 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 and it's not just like the period after the name. Disney, it's Disney Cruise Line, not Disney Cruise Line, you know, and um, also what's funny is that it's the same, like lately the ones I saw was the same woman, the same picture, 
And if you look at it carefully, it's like they show two pictures. She's on one side and then she's on the other. Look carefully at the picture. It's just a mirror flip. And, yeah. you know, type of thing. And and it's just kind of ridiculous because share those things and, and to get an entry into some sort of um, – because they've got all these free trips and stuff. The problem of it is is that these are just ploys to get personal information from you. Don't do it. Don't share the information. Don't click on it. Don't like it. Just walk away. I know that we want to win something. We all want something from for free. Walk away. The same thing if you get a call, phone call, from a company saying, hey, you want a vacation. Are you sure? Because chances are they're on the other line wanting to sell you a timeshare or something. And you're going to have to, you're still, you may end up getting that vacation once you arm wrestle your way through a, some sort of a presentation. But the fact of the matter is, is that do you really want to go through that kind of crap? Seriously, people are just going to try to do whatever they can to gather your personal information. And that is where the problems begin. Um, I'm mentioning this here on the air as kind of a public service announcement because I've been seeing it more and more. And, you know, you can only say so many times, this is fake, fake news. Don't do this. And people still do it. And I understand why. Um, if you see it, just tell the person nicely, even if it's in a PM and just say, Hey, this is not really, um, you know, this is not really legit. You saw someone who worked for Disney share it and you were like, are you serious? Eish. Yeah. So, but, uh, uh, Enrique, I want to mention, I know that Kylie actually did ride on Sleeky Dog and she was not able to take video. She is a cast member. So <laughs> you're not going to get any information from Kylie about the Sleeky Dog other than what she just said. And, uh, Kylie happens to be a personal friend of mine, and I know that uh, she she and I talked about her possibly coming onto the show sometime in the future about it. But trust me, if she did it and she liked it and she's talking about it, that's about all she can do. Uh, she's she's a Kylie is a, a really good person, and I'm glad that she uh, she's joining us tonight, uh, watching us on the air. Um, yeah, I know. I know. I just, I wanted to let you know. I just wanted to just mention that Enrique only because, you know, I don't want other people to think otherwise, not just you, my friend. So yeah, let's get into the meat and potatoes. I like meat and potatoes, but can we sub substitute the potatoes for maybe a nice green vegetable, preferably like broccoli, maybe even some asparagus, but no Brussels sprouts. One better. How about we just replace it with more meat? Oh, I like that. Cause what's better this than a big Wait, bowl of meat? Could it be bacon? <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. As long as it's crispy. Oh, I love crispy bacon. Yeah, we're, we're, we're golden here. All right, let's do it. So we're going to do, we did our top five rides the other day. We're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to talk about things we would, I know, Mary, not food. But I guess that was kind of misleading because we did say food in the beginning. Um, we're going to talk about how we would like to refurb Magic Kingdom. What do we feel needs to be done to make Magic Kingdom the top echelon again? You have, you know, Epcot slowly rebuilding itself. You've got Animal Kingdom just opening, you know, opening Pandora not too long ago. You've got uh, MGM, who's going to have Toy Story Land opening in June. And, you know, uh, Star Wars opening in 2019. And with the 50th anniversary right around the corner. What do what does Magic Kingdom need to get the ball rolling here? That's a really good question. I mean, I was actually thinking about thinking about what I was going to say, and you know, the fact of the matter is, is that there are so many good attractions that while they're still good, um, you know, they can use a little bit of you know a little bit of freshening up like let me let me throw this out and by all means don't don't shoot me when you first hear this one danny because i want you to hear the whole thing oh boy 
I actually think Buzz Lightyear needs a little bit of a refurb. But I think I think they need to take Buzz Lightyear out. Why would you say that? I think it just serves more of a purpose than MGM. Uh, okay, but let's go under the assumption it's going to stay there, though. A lot of rumors it goes away. Uh, I like it there. I really do, to be honest. Oh, but it needs a major overhaul. Oh, I know. It's this is... all sin. <clears throat> oh, I know. But here's and that's kind of what where I was going to go. Um, okay, seriously, you walk through that queue line, and I got to tell you something. As much as I love Buzz, that Q line, or at least the sounds of that Q line, is just the most annoying sounds in the world. That it's like it it for forty five minutes, forty five yeah, minutes, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it makes me cry. Okay, <laughs> so now I still love it. I love the ride. Okay. And I'm able to max out the, I'm, I'm able to max out the ride easily uh, almost every time. As long as I am able to control the joystick, then I can actually win. <laughs> now with that being said, so here's, here's a couple things. I think that they can do something to be more, make that cue more entertaining. Um, maybe, um, maybe even make the cue. So in such a way where, you know, they don't have to repaint it every other day because someone's picking at the walls and junk like that. The Star Command doesn't have duct tape on it Yeah, anymore. Star Command, you know, really, Star Command should not have stars, duct, star duct tape. Um, make it more interactive. Make that queue interactive. And then, you know, I would probably also venture to say that, you know, right before you get to where Buzz talks, you have that, like, panel. And I would say, if you're going to do something, have some fun with that panel, you know, in a sense of being able to just at least touch it and walk by because the queue does actually go by quite quickly because it is a, is a constantly moving ride, but do something with that panel. Hold up the line. Cause they spot where you could step offline and take a selfie with buzz. They never did that. They finally give you the option to step offline and take a selfie with them. It's one of the most horrible selfie spots. Ever. Oh, dude! All it's so dark. It you always have like the MySpace angle to try to get everything. MySpace. I always come out looking like a <laughs> nut job in these pictures, like about to rob a bank. Oh, oh it's gosh. terrible. You're right, though. You know they may give you that little selfie spot, but it's not really a very well contained selfie spot. Um. But I just think there needs to be something, at least in the beginning part of that queue, to make it a little bit more interactive, a little more entertaining, uh, different sound effects in the background, maybe different music in the background. Um, you know, just that that alarm type sound all the time is because you're in such a small area. It, I, I know it's like supposed to go along with like Buzz's little spiel that he has. Mm -hmm. But you hear it through the the entire queue, and that's the annoying part. Why not just put on like movie clips? See, I think that would even be if great. it's just audio, just... even even Buzz Lightyear commercials. You know, that was, you know the yeah. special commercials that are just made for Buzz Lightyear, or maybe you know you would have like, oh oh oh, here's a plus I plus idea. Basically, you have your own Buzz Lightyear cartoon or cartoons that last like three to four minutes plus a Buzz Lightyear cartoon or at least a Toy Story cartoon of some sort or a Toy Story trailer or something to that extent. But you have something that you can and would have on several different screens so that as you're walking through the line, you can watch three or four of these different small Buzz Lightyear shorts. And, it, and these could actually be very much original shorts that you could only see there in the ride. Now, granted, you could also, bad idea. but you could also do other things like, you know, like the, uh, the Buzz Lightyear falling with style scene in, in the first Toy Story movie. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have things like that, wonderful clips like that, or maybe even have. Buzz, you're flying. <laughs> yeah, this is not flying. It's falling <laughs> with style. Um, you can have like a little newscast and showing that type of thing. Buzz in and out of Spanish mode. Yes, I like that, Brandy. Miss or Nib, Nib, Nibbit, Nib. 
Miss Nibbets. Nibbets, yes. Nibbets. Or also, oh, wait, wait, tongue. wait. Dude, that's even better. Brandy brings up a really good idea. Maybe even just every once in a while, have a Buzz Lightyear cartoon pop up in Spanish or French <laughs> or German or or whatever language, you know? You, you have just, you know, Buzz Lightyear around the world, you know? And maybe you show the, dan- the, the Spanish dancing scene from Toy Story 3 or something like that. I just think that that would actually be really cool. Here's the thing. You do something like that and maybe even intermix the, the, the a safety spiel or something once in a while that at least it has a purpose outside of being just entertaining. But I realize that we're also trying to instill more conversation with, with you know, families and things like that. But I think this is just a this. I would rather have someone stare at a Buzz Lightyear cartoon like that and, and talk about it as a family and laugh about it than, than a whole bunch of kids doing this. You know. Yeah, you're so, still gonna get that. I'm still gonna get that. But that's my idea. That's my first idea, refurb idea. The ride itself, yes, I think you know, make sure it's running mechanically so you you actually have some halfway decent blasters that don't like fall apart or actually like don't like the trigger doesn't work and things like that. I'm not talking about the mechanical stuff. Cause all that stuff has to be checked anyway. That's my idea. <sighs> Mine's a little more grand frontier land. <laughs> just the whole land. It just, it's dated obviously before anybody yells at me. Yes, I understand it's supposed to be, but it's very run down. Uh, Pago's bill does not see the traffic. It used to see. The Country Bear Jamboree. Let's be real. I mean, the animatronics in there are uh, on the level of horrible. How could you say Pecos Bill doesn't get the traffic when it's constantly crowded in there? Every time I've walked by in the past year, it has not been crowded. You're talking about the restaurant, right? Yeah, midday. Dude, every time I walk in there, it is like it is like people are vulturing for your spot. I don't know. I've literally walked in there. A couple people sitting down. Dead. And I mean like lunchtime. Maybe I'm just going at the wrong time. Maybe it's... Maybe oh, you could just be busy times. Oh, well, also at the same time, I, I realized that, like one memory that comes to my mind, it was raining outside and every restaurant gets packed when it's raining. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, The shooting gallery. I mean, come on. That whole section. And, it, you know, it's just... I I don't know how to fix it because you've got Splash Mountain and you've got Thunder Mountain. Uh, Splash Mountain and Thunder Mountain. Thunder Mountain. Yes. I don't. I don't know how you you would have to retheme them. But the thing is, because everybody's like, "Oh, Tom Sawyer's Island should become Moana." Moana doesn't fit into Frontierland. It would almost be a land to itself. Throw it on the map as another land. I don't think it's that big to deserve a I'm land. I'm not saying it's that big to do it either. I'm I'm just kind of spitballing an idea. There. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to sit here and think where frontier land can change, but without having to do a full overhaul as to where you're not changing the actual nostalgic of Splash Mountain. I don't know. See, the thing is, you're hitting in the head. That's what part of the refurb problem everybody has is nostalgia. I mean, there are some things that you don't want to change. And actually, that's the thing. You don't want to necessarily change it because there is a, there is a fine line between reimagining something and doing a refurb for something. That's, that, I think that's, that's where that line is hard to cross. I agree with the idea that, like, you know, freshen up Country Bear Jamboree. If you still want to tell that story, tell that story. But, you know, don't make it so that it seems so, you know, 1977. Um, you know. Yeah, I mean, we're not really removing things. We're just yeah. trying to figure out how to make them better. I mean, I guess everybody's the general consensus is just adding new animatronics would go a long way. Well, Maybe th- a quick facelift. I, I mean. I think so. I think if nothing else, you maybe even just change the clothes once in a while. Um, they had, it's had the same story over and over again. I'm sure you can do something a little bit different to make the story a little bit different, to change it up a bit and maybe change the audio track. 
but you know splash needs to be chained to zootopia or they need to incorporate an animal kingdom i mean i've been probably the biggest motivator on yeah. social media about bringing zootopia into the parks splash mountain is not the place for it you can't it's just too iconic of a ride i think you're you right though i still think i still i still think you have a very valid point is to integrate more zootopia into animal kingdom than anywhere I else i love that movie it's a great movie, and I think, and I, and I just think that it would work well. In fact, I tell you what, um, you know, it's kind of funny because you have, um, I know you have Rafiki's Planet Watch, and and I know we're going to Animal Kingdom here for a second, but I'll just give me a little leeway here for a second. You have Rafiki's Planet Watch, and you know that's where you can learn about all sorts of animals and all sorts of habitats, and they have that petting petting zoo area and and so on and you can talk to cast members who are you know vets that are who are veterinary specialists for those types of um those types of animals of all sorts of climates in fact i remember we actually had a nice chat with one of the veterinary specialists there when we first got our bearded dragons because there was a couple bearded that they had there and and we always go by to stop and see what they're doing and mm-hmm. it was wonderful. But the thing is, is that because there are so many different types of animals and climates and everything represented at Rafiki's Planet Watch, it might do well as being kind of more rebranded in a Zootopia type of thing. Although it's it's really hard because, you know, Animal Kingdom and Lion King are kind of, you know, it's really hard to separate those two nameplates just because yeah. But I think Zootopia. And I don't think you place. should. Yeah. Um. Someone else said something. Uh. I. Th- uh, I think they would put something in Frontierland with Woody's Roundup or something like that with Jesse Bullseye, etc. I would have agreed two years ago, but you know, maybe a year before they really announced the Toy Story Land. You, they're really, they're not going to want to push those characters outside of Toy Story Land. They're going to want to funnel you. If you want to see Toy Story characters, they're going to want to funnel you to TSO. You got a it's point that there. simple. Yeah, you got a point there. It's, it's almost, a, I don't want to say the damage is done, but the, the, the stage has been set. Yeah. You know. Before I pass it back to you, this is what bothers me about Zootopia. Hmm. How is Coco that literally just gets released on Netflix a couple days ago? We didn't mention that. Literally just got released. You see it in the parks. We've been seeing it in the parks. This is a fresh move on the money abroad, so underrated, and we never saw anything. Moana, huge movie, brought in your bucks. When you bring up your next Moana and Coco, I want to see what the numbers were between them. Um, you don't see nothing about Moana in the parks. Pocahontas, an all-time classic. You don't see anything in the parks about it. No, It's just weird... I want to know who's the person on the whiteboard that says this is the movie we're going to push them to the parks quicker. Like Frozen took a little bit to get into the parks. Oh, but so, I, but you know, it took a little bit to get into the parks. But I mean, now if you think about it, you've got two parks that has decent representation for Frozen. That's what. Yeah, I mean, bef- leading up to the actual ride, it took a while. Pandora took a long time. I mean, they eventually got a land. Yeah. But I mean, how many years later was that from the original movie release? Eight? Well, I, actually, to tell you the truth, I take the back. There are three, three all you know, all but Animal Kingdom has some sort of re- big time reference to Frozen. Epcot, Frozen Ep- ride. Epcot, Frozen's ride. Frozen ride. You have the sing along over at Hollywood Studios, and That's if I'm true. not mistaken, Anna and Elsa are part of, you know, the, the show. Hall. The, well, the show at the castle. Yeah, yeah, they so are. So I'm not even referring to meet and greets. I'm referring to some type of performance or entertainment attraction, that sort of thing. Um, so that's that's kind of you interesting. Know, pe- people are like, oh, but Judy's in the parade. Moana's not even there. But, uh, Zootopia was out years before Moana, before Moana probably even hit the drawing board. And, and the all thing- we got is a Judy in a parade? Well, also, what the thing is, you have Moana, or you had Moana in the parks as a meet and greet. And in Hollywood Studios, right? <sighs> Wasn't it where uh, One Man's Dream before like Groot and all that? I never got a chance to see her because it was it was she was there for a very very short period of time, and now people are still asking where they can meet Moana, and Moana is nowhere to be found. I mean, 
yeah, come on. I mean, I'd love to have my picture taken with Maui. I mean, that would actually be hilarious. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, granted, I realize there's only so much space and you can do only so much. But, you know, the fact is, is that between Zootopia, uh, Moana are two are two attractions that are relatively new that I think people st- are still seeing new for the first time, either by Netflix or whatever. Um, Coco and its integration into like, you know, into Epcot. Okay, fine. That's, I think if nothing else, Disney learned on what they can or cannot do with, um, you know, certain intellectual property in the parks quickly, quickly enough. I mean, cause you're right. It took a while for, you know, frozen to become think, integrated into that. I think you would like that comment. A Baymax ride flying through San Francisco, France, San Francisco, Tokyo. You know what? I think that would be cool. In fact, you know what? I'll even take that a next step further. You know, it'd be funny. You go on Soren and all of a sudden at random, you're doing just that. Then instead of, instead of soaring over California or soaring around the world, all of a sudden you are part of a big old Baymax ride. That's going through, you know, a fictional, a fictional town. That would be pretty trip or, or right, better yet, better yet. Make it so that you're going through a whole bunch of different fictional towns as portrayed by different Disney characters. But like Buzz, like, Buzz, like you're going through, you're, you're going through Agrabah, you're going through, um, you know, you're going through France, you know, you're going, you know, going through Scotland for Merida, but it's gotta be random. Like all of a sudden, poof, this is what you're doing. That would be cool. Okay, we have we have diverted traffic way off this particular run. Real quick though, Brave at least has a photo op, a very cool photo op. I, I actually, to tell you the truth, um, when we got to see Merida over there, right off rough off the set of the castle, that was one of the most coolest character interactions I've had in a long time. Really? That mo- the 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 Merida the 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 Merida there was so in character, and she just looked the part beautifully, and was so much in character. It was, it was fabulous. And, and it, like, you know, like at that time, she's like, you know, in what kingdom are you from? And I'm like, well, we're from the kingdom of Indiana. Oh, I've never been to the kingdom of Indiana. Is it, is it fun? You know, you know it, was, it was just, it was so good. Oh, I, I got a comment. Wait, go, go back to, go back to Kimberly's comment here for a second. Kimberly says, meet the Robinsons was so ignored. And it would be awesome all over Tomorrowland. I love that idea. And by the way, Kimberly, I agree with you. You know, that movie meet the Robinsons was very much underrated and it was, and it was Walt Disney animation studios, you know, triumphant return back into, you know, animation. And, um, I, I have to agree. You know, the problem is you integrate like that something into Tomorrowland and, you know, it could get kind of stale relatively quickly. Um, but I agree. It would be cool to have something like that. They, they need to bring that movie back as kind of, somehow really hype it up this time but that was a great movie i really i really enjoyed it that movie was inspiring to me and um you know as i said it was it was walt disney animation studios triumphant return back into animation and they did a fantastic job people just underrated it you know and i I don't know why i really honestly don't okay back on track where are we going Oh, is it my turn or your turn? Oh, it's my turn. Hey, hey. Your turn. Okay. So this has been this has been one of those things that I think has been a complaint of Magic Kingdom for quite some time. Um I I would really like to see I would really like to see some fine dining in Magic Kingdom. I would actually like to see something really nice. Not, now, now, when I say nice, I, I'm not just referring to something that's extraordinarily upscale. I'm referring to something that, you know, it's not a character meal. It's not necessarily, you know, not a character meal, not necessarily done up in 
uh, a certain type of intellectual property, you know, not done in a certain land or a theme, but really have a nice dining establishment within the Magic Kingdom. Now, where we would put that right now, I don't know. I just don't know. But I really think that as a part of an overall refurb, I would love to see the Magic Kingdom have that and have it still be a family experience, um, but actually have it to be just a really nice restaurant with some really good food that would be have suitable options for both you know, kids, picky eaters, as well as a dad who may want a steak. You Put know. it in the terrace. Huh? Put it in the terrace. Put it in the terrace instead of the uh, Tomorrowland Terrace Cafe. It's terrible. It's kind of the dessert party it's, it Well, you know what? It's not just I, the dessert party and the cafe itself are two different things. But I would have to say that the cafe definitely took a turn for the better. A big, big turn for the better. Because when it was the Tomorrowland Noodle Terrace, I would have said hands oh, down. Well, that's your bad one. I that's, forgot. Yes. I mean, when it was the Tomorrowland Noodle Terrace, I mean, seriously, I think I would, I think I would risk eating gas station sushi before I would eat there. Okay. And I'm really not exaggerating. It was crap. Um, last few times we've been there as the, you know, redesigned Tomorrowland Terrace Cafe. It's actually been quite good. Um, you're right, though. You know, the, the dessert party is, that's a whole different story altogether. But that would, you know, that would be able to be something to be changed. I realize that some people say, well, Tony's is kind of a nice sit down for families. Mm. Some people might say the Plaza. The Plaza, I like the Plaza restaurant. I really do. I really like the Plaza restaurant. I don't think I've ever eaten there. You know what's really good? It's it's good food. And maybe even maybe even make the Plaza restaurant just a little bit bigger. Maybe make it a little bit, you know, just plus it a little bit more cuz it's not really it's not really themed, so to speak, but it's got I think it's got some of the best food there and they've got great desserts. Yeah, and you know, Chris, Chris is making kind of a, a fun comment about Club Thirty Three is coming. Uh, you're with your fine dining, only thirty thousand dollars to join. You know, I'm not even referring to that. And the thing yeah, that's that it, so out of the realm for normal. You know, I mean, you know, there. Are, I don't, I don't consider anything that you have to be a part of a huge club. You know, as as a part of this whole thing. Besides, even if you go to the Club Thirty Threes that are open right now. There's no real restaurants. That's the that's the interesting part. Unlike Club Thirty Three in Disneyland, which is a restaurant. Um, you know, so. on your on your food topic, yeah, Gordon has a really good idea, and it was something that crossed my mind: a legit nostalgia themed restaurant with all sorts of Disney decorations, but historic Disney. Maybe you walk in, they have another partnership statue, like a version of Walt. Yeah, all Getting, black like, and white photos like of what was being built. Maybe sign check or documents back from the seventies. Ooh, I like that. Right, That's you know, and make it like a fine dining. Make it the the make it big enough where a lot of people can go, but make it cozy enough where you don't feel like you have to. You're just doing sign auditorium eating. Yeah, and you gotta feel. You gotta feel people. You still have to feel comfortable walking in there with a shirt and shorts on. The ability to that nostalgia. I love that sort of thing. I love nostalgia type type of themes. It's gonna sound a little stupid, but take Planet Hollywood, mm-hmm. dumb it down a little bit, but make it all Disney, but classy. Not like random things hanging from the ceilings and how cheesy it was. But that style where you just have a lot of stuff in one area. Wouldn't you like by doing like, wouldn't you have to like not dumb it down? If you're talking about planet Hollywood, <laughs> you would actually well, be. No. <laughs> Do you remember though? I don't, I've never been in the new planet Hollywood. Cause once again, on this show, I will repeat it. If you're a Disney influencer, you don't go to chain restaurants. Um, I haven't, I have not been vacation, don't go to chain restaurants. So I have not been in the new one. I mean, I haven't either. I have not. Been I'm basing it off of the old one. You remember the old one? How there was just stuff everywhere. It was too much. You're referring to basically every planet Hollywood on the planet. Planet Earth. Yes. Yeah, so just it's it's so much stuff, but you just you, you can't focus on one thing. There's just too much going on. I like that aspect if it was just done cleaner and not things just thrown on a ceiling globe. 
Oh, I I love the idea. I mean, I love the idea to have you know a touch of Walt to be there, a touch of Walt, and even a touch of Roy. You know that would um, that would really be. You know, that would really be something that you can look and basically most of the nostalgia stuff would be in like, you know, the lobby area that you're waiting and that. Yeah. So either before or after you eat, you can really kind of take a, you know, self curated tour of some of these artifacts and so on and so forth. I I, I just I really like that. How about if you have booths for kids? If it's a fine dining, you're going to bring kids with you as well and say you have booths. Mm-hmm. And you know, like how the old diners used to have the little jukebox at the table. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll have like a little screen built into the wall, and very quietly just have like the Disney Cartoon Channel running, like have the one in the hotel with all like those quick oh, Disney the, the, black the, shorts. Mm-hmm. Something you know, I'm just trying to think outside the box because you want classy, but you got to remember this is Magic Kingdom. You're going to have families who want to come in there. This is not a black tie affair. No, no. And that's kind of what I'm saying. I still want to be able to get something nice to eat, you know, something better than what they currently have available because there really isn't. And I say fine dining again, I'm talking about a little bit more than just, you know, burgers, stuff like that. Even though you can get more than just burgers around magic kingdom, you know, um, I know some people might say, well, you know, the idea of what's going on with um, be our guests, you know, some people might consider that more upscale. You know what? I like be our guest, but, and that's my opinion. The opinions actually split within my family. And every time I talk about, or every time I look at different things about be our guest, people either like it or they don't. There's really mm. no, there's no in between. Oh, Paula, oh, I like that idea. They can call it yesterday's I like uh, boy that. we've got the best listeners we really do they are really on the game tonight with the ideas all right so i think one more piece sure. um oh he's thinking no i had a bunch but we covered a lot of them and this is gonna seem like overkill a little bit but tomorrowland speedway I'll, if you I'll, want to keep I'll hear you it, out. I'll hear you out. Can we just turn in the cars? I mean, I'm trying to think of the least expensive way to change it, modernize it, clean it up, and make it good again. I don't have a problem with that at all. In fact, to tell you the truth, when they did, when they redid Autopia in Disneyland, they did a great job at it. Each one of the cars has a has a whole different. Not, it's not a racing theme, by the way. Um, all the cars have new, you know, different types of paint jobs and this really beautiful paintwork on the cars. They have all new engines that I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Honda is a sponsor of Autopia, so they have modern engines and those things. And I say modern engines, you know, like you know things that are they're they're cleaner burning and better for the environment and they keep running (laughs) um you know that sort of thing um i love the idea of having it be something like cars and maybe not necessarily like all the race cars but you know all the different characters plus others that might be period correct type of thing um it would be a cross between cars and autopia wasn't hudson wasn't that one of the guys Doc hudson yes I would love to drive his car. Mm-hmm. Oh, I will tell you this a little bit of an aside. There is a car show that usually happens every Thursday night in my, you know, it's one town, neighboring town. And there is a guy that has a Hudson Hornet. Wow. And, and it's, it's, it's not, it's not like the dark blue, like what Doc Hudson is, but it's, yeah. a, it's a beautiful, beautiful, very finely restored automobile. But That's he, awesome. but he's got, he, for for the windows, he's got the he's got a little screen that has the eyes, okay, and it has kind cool. of and it kind of has like a little homage to Doc Hudson type type of thing because it is the same like exact vehicle what Doc is except for a different color. Here's yeah. the question: Yeah, does he have white walls on it? Oh, of course. Okay, just making oh my sure. gosh, you have to have <laughs> white walls. I have I have those big fat white walls on on my truck. Oh, I yeah. want to put white walls on my car. Oh man, 
<laughs> and, and, you know, no, 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 don't do that. That'd be funny. It's so awesome. Oh, jeez, you're gonna cruise a miracle mile, as the song says. <laughs> All right, but yeah, uh, no. what's your last one? Well, so this is more of an enhancement than anything else. But um, you know, could we could we do something to? I don't know. This again, we're trying to. I'm trying not to. I'm trying to keep things in the minds of refurbs, rather than do something to do something really crazy. Um, I always loved. I, I always loved having the Skyway. You know, the gondolas that they had going from Tomorrowland to Fantasyland. That was something that I loved, and I know why they took it out and stuff like that. There's a lot of stories behind that. But if you're going to do something, you know, that, that still kind of sticks around for a while, I think it would be kind of cool if they can, um, you know, take the buildings that they were. I know the buildings that they were in are, are gone now, but I would probably say, oh, gosh, I would love to see it have it come back. But I, I'm kind of playing in my mind. That's not really a good idea. But then I'm thinking to myself, don't miss necessarily make a theme potty area if you're going to put a castle up there that looks really, really cool and you can't go see it. Um, there's just so many other things I would love to have them kind of redo. Um, maybe little Teslas for the track. Oh, my gosh, that was pretty funny. Um, that would be funny. That would be really good. But I was, I was thinking, what do you think about actually doing kind of a refurb slash update for the um tta and what i'm kind of thinking is expanding the track to make it go i'm up for that to make it go a little bit longer i told you to go around the whole park (laughs) see i think okay i think it would be cool to be able to go around the whole park and you know kind of have instead of maybe that's maybe that's what it is i was kind of i couldn't put my finger on it but now i just did make it so that you have the tta have two stops Tomorrowland and Fantasyland, very much like the Skyway did, but you would actually have it in a much more controlled environment. And I just think that that would actually be really kind of cool. Granted, you can, I mean, that means you can get off at Fantasyland right by Rapunzel's Potties. And then, or you can do the whole circle tour as they, you know, as, as a lot of people refer to it, you know, going from one end to the other, which may take 20 minutes. But it would be awesome. That would be so cool. And to be able to see, like, to be able to see seven dwarfs from up above, that would be awesome. To be able to see, you know, some of the other things from, from you know, 40 feet in the, in the air, 30 feet in the air, that'd be awesome. Just expand yeah. it, you know. So I have the breakdown for what we talked about previously. Okay, what's that? About Moana versus Coca. They were literally released a day apart from each other a year. November 23rd, 2016, Moana. November 22nd, 2017 for Coco. Okay. The budget for Moana, 150 million. Coco was 175. Okay. Okay. Not, okay. Domestic opening weekend, Moana won 56.6 million compared to 50.8 for Coco. This 48.7 for Moana. Two hundred nine point seven million for Coco. Inflation adjusted for the box office uh, bumps Moana up to two fifty six, and obviously Coco stays the same. This is where Coco wins, and Coco wins by a lot. International box offices: Moana three hundred and ninety million, Coco five hundred and ninety million. Makes sense. Worldwide box offices. Once again, Coco won hand, hand, handily here. $800 million for Coco, wow. $639 million for Moana. That's still a lot. I mean, that's just a, I mean. But talking about, now granted, I understand that Coco is going to have a bigger hold on international. Sure. But if we're talking about where Disney World is, which is domestically, I mean, $50 million, they made more. And did the movie for twenty five million dollars less? So really, this movie generated seventy five million dollars more domestically, and we see nothing. 
crazy. You know what? We know that we're approaching the days of integrating all sorts of intellectual property into a lot of the Disney experience that we see these days, whether it be in merch, theming, uh, dining themes, um, you know, attractions. We know we're going to eventually see it. It's just a matter. I think it's not a matter of if I think it's a matter of when. And I think that's the thing. We're just going to have to really kind of see what happens. It's an if or not. It's a when, not an if. Yeah. I, I mean, I get it. You know, and you know, as much as I love Zootopia, Zootopia didn't hold a uh, Zoot. This okay, okay, I'm what? wrong. What? I'm wrong. Zootopia crushes Coco, crushed Coco. Where? where how did you get your numbers every so wrong? Category. How'd you get your numbers wrong? No, no, no. Because I was about to say, see, Coco beat Zootopia. Zootopia crushed Coco. Beat Coco by twenty five million in the box office opening weekend. Beat it by over a hundred and forty million dollars domestic overall. Um, beat it internationally box office by just shy of a hundred million dollars, and worldwide box office broke a billion dollars. Billion. One. One billion nineteen million eight hundred eighty-eight thousand four hundred fourteen dollars and thirty-six cents. They added the cents in there. Wow! Zootopia people, get on board. I don't get it. And also, this movie cost twenty-five million dollars less than Coco did. Coco was a great movie. Don't get me wrong, but I don't get why it got the instant love and affection that other movies never got. And it's got to be because I, I would have said, like in the beginning of the show, it had to be because of the international presence that it had with the, the draw it had from Latin America. Zootopia, Zootopia crushed it by $200 million. Zootopia was a billion-dollar movie overseas. Why? I don't know. That seemed crazy to me. I thought Coco would have been the biggest international movie for Disney. I like them both. They're both entertaining. I was thought I was yeah. oh, huh? <laughs> made a billion dollars, but yeah, we still have animatronics from nineteen seventy five. Different line items in the budget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's one of those. I mean, my daughter and I were actually talking about you know the difference, and you know, she she liked Coco especially because of you know the different things that she has um, experienced from you know her immersions, her immersion into. Um, I'll say, you know, Spanish type culture, you know, it's just really kind of, you know, she really liked it mainly because of that. So we'll have to, we'll have to see. Um, you got more allergies with Coco than Zootopia. Oh, oh was... all the flowers. Oh, I thought he was going to get a little more teary eyed. Oh, maybe, oh, maybe, that, oh, maybe that's the case. Duh. <laughs> Take no. us away, Chris. All righty. <laughs> heard the show and we hope you want more well feel free to join us over at our social media platforms instagram and our facebook page can be found at behind the ears podcast our web page is behind the podcast.net and our email is behind the ears podcast at gmail.com and our twitter handle is at behind the ears pc and come and join the conversation about all things disney over at the wdw community page don't forget to rate and review the show over at iTunes or Apple Podcasts as it really helps us get the word out about the show. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes or Apple Podcasts or the Podbean app. Also, you can listen to us on Stitcher Radio, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and via Alexa and Google Home. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I am Uncle Danny. That was Mr. Chris, and this was another live recording of Behind the Ears podcast. Like Chris says, don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms. Come hang out on the WDW Community on WDW Community Facebook page, where we chit chat about Disney twenty four seven, three sixty five, three sixty four. We don't do a lot on Christmas. <laughs> Just a full morning. It's just a fair warning. <laughs> Don't expect a lot. Uh, with that being said, guys, thank you all for joining us here. It was a fantastic show. We appreciate all our live listeners, and we appreciate all those podcast downloaders. Um, 
Everybody have a safe and wonderful evening. We'll see you all on Thursday night. Don't forget to tuck your kids in tight. Wear your seatbelts and drink that cranberry juice. I am Uncle Danny. I bid you all adieu. And I'm Mr. Chris. Hey, thanks a lot, everybody, for being here. Love the conversation tonight. Love the interaction. And we also just love hanging out with you guys. So I'll tell you what, until we meet again, we hope to see you again real soon. Take care.